Good morning. My name is Michael Thompson. This is my story. Eagle Creek Guide Service here on Fort Gibson Lake of Oklahoma and I'm pleased to have Cody Metzger with me this morning. We're going to go out and do some summertime white bass fishing on Fort Gibson Lake. Boy, it's one of the, uh, typically known as one of the hottest bass, white bass lakes in the state and I'm going to share with you some of the things that I do and also uh, what you should expect to get from a guide if you hire one for services. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just like most people. When I was a little child, I used to love to go fishing. Lived on a farm, uh, basically down at Texana, Oklahoma. We didn't get a chance to go to the lake much, but boy, we got a lot of fishing done in the pond every chance we got. And, uh, you know, that was really my love of fishing. That's how I learned the basic skills of casting and retrieving. And the more you do, the more you learn. And uh, there's great learning opportunity in every time you go out on the lake. I've got Cody Betzger with me today, and we're going to go out and catch some summertime white bass. Going to have a great time. Hang on with us and get your life jacket. Here we go. Okay, here we've uh, come to our first spot. I call this Pelican Island. Now, if there's a uh, a true name for it. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but the pelicans stay on this island when they when the water goes down below normal. It has a hazard buoy out here, and I've seen two boats in the last couple of days actually beach themselves or tear the prop off on that submerged island. It's really important, boy. If you see a buoy out in the middle of the water, uh, you want to stay well clear of it. I mean, I, over a hundred yards away because. That buoy is there for a reason. It's it's to let you know that it can be a, a, a dangerous place to be running your boat. We usually start a trip out at seven o'clock in the morning. No reason to get up any earlier than that. And we're marking the shad right here right now and uh, looking for that school of white bass. And when we find them, I'll throw a marker buoy over so we've got a visual reference where the fish are at. They, you know, once they get in these summer patterns, they'll be here for several days. And typically, uh, you, can get, you can go back to them every day until the, the bait fish move off or the water gets so hot the fish have got to head deeper. Okay, now, we're gonna use a jigging spoon this morning because I found that this is really uh, the best lure. The old Dalmatian today is, is gonna work for us and we're gonna make uh, some little casts. We're gonna fish here at 10, 11 foot of water right now. And you really don't have to cast far. You don't have to be an expert caster. You know, we're just going to throw it out there and let it sink to the bottom. That is critical. I mean, that, that, those fish are on the bottom, so you've got to let it get down there to them. And then pop it up, let it fall back to the bottom, and pop it up. And I want you to do that three times, okay? Okay. And then on that third time, I want you to just start reeling fast, okay? Because okay. what it does is it triggers a fish to come up and bite it, all right? right? There's yours. Yeah. A little slower. Okay. In between the... In between the... Raising it up and let it fall down. You know, you, you sometimes you can just fish... When they're really aggressive, you can, you can fish it fast. Otherwise, you just have to slow down, keep that bait right in front of the fish's mouth as much as you can. Oh, got one right there. Hey, all right, there's the first one. Oh, first fish. Boy, they, they can fight they'll, too. They'll eat it, <laughs> yeah, betcha. He's going under the boat. Yeah. All right, let's see what size he is. Hey, that's a nice one too. Pull him right over here. That is a beautiful fish. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, all right. We got on him right away, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't take long. Again, in the right place at the right time. Works out great. We'll have a bucket full of these in no time. Matter of fact, this is a great time to talk about how to prepare uh, the fish that we're gonna, we're gonna catch today. I mean, obviously, if you wanna keep some fish, you need to make sure that 
that you uh, you take care of them because you know fish will fish will uh, spoil pretty fast and they're going to die pretty fast even in uh, particularly in these conditions where the water's hot and the air's hot and everything else so I always put my fish right on ice okay I've got I carry ice and put it here in the bucket and get it right on ice and that is going to preserve them make them last a lot longer go ahead and cast out and get, catch you another one all right you know there's probably several lures that you can use during this time of the year. A lot of people like inline spinners and a lot of people like rattle traps and they catch fish, but I just find that oh. that, that spoon catches bigger fish. Day in and day out. Oh, there right he there. is, there he is, yeah. That one got it on the, the real end. Mm -hmm. And that can happen too, so. Whoa. You know, there's several ways of catching them with that spoon. All right, second fish there. Is there a size limit on keeping them here? No, there isn't a size limit. No, I. Uh, there's not a size limit or uh, a number limit on this lake. If you have a lake that has hybrids or stripers, the, uh, the fisheries division put a, a number limit on your fish because people can't, cont can't uh, differentiate between a striper, a small striper, or a, a small hybrid. So, you know, they're trying to protect that resource. And uh, I think they allow you 20 fish per day per person under those circumstances. And reality is that's a lot of fish. But I, I generally clean 40, 50 fish a day on a guide trip. And uh, this is, again, another nice, nice size summer white bass. And that will make, uh, make some good fillets. I already got another one right here. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. A little big guy. Yeah, another time. Now, I always take the fish off for my clients, and I'll tell you why I do it. Because, you know, these fish, they, they get what I call hot, and they'll flip around a lot. You see these, you see these uh, dorsal fins right here? I mean, they stick out. You put your hand right in there, and you're going to get stuck. And they will uh, it, it'll sometimes run your day. And I can still see the fish on the sonar, so it's, you know, it, uh, they're going to get activated here not too long. And, Right there. <laughs> Reeling <laughs> it in, huh? Yep. Yeah, got him excited. Yep. Thank God, Lee, there's a free meal. Well, they do fight good. Yeah, they're, they're a great fighting fish. Stretching your line makes that a lot of fun, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, you look for those little twitches in the line. Yes. There right he is. There. Oh, oh, that's a, a little that's bigger, a bigger one, there. one. Yeah, look at that. Come on. <laughs> that is a bigger fish. You know, most of these you're going to catch are going to be a pound, a pound and three quarter. And occasionally you catch a two pounder. In the summer, these fish are long and lean. Sometimes they look like they've been on slim fast. <laughs> and uh, that's but, you know, again, that's that's a pound and a half fish, and, and those are really nice uh, white bass for for the summer. Good job, son. Got it right when it came to the top. That was fun to watch, wasn't it? Yeah. That's a nice fish. That's one that'll be going in the pot. Chubby. Good, healthy fish. Four to five years old. On his last, making his last stop. Like a pretty good one. It's taking drag, isn't he? Mm -hmm. so. Not bad. That's right. Not bad at all. You take a buck of them every day. Mm -hmm. You know somebody's had some fun if they got a got a live well full of them. Yes, yep, there's still fish down there. Got a little deeper. That one was just dropping it. Yeah. I didn't even work it at all. Yeah, he was That's looking. That's a good fish. He was looking for it. Oh. That's a better fish. There we go. Look at that. Maybe he's not. He's fighting like one. 
He's still pretty good size. Well, he's fighting because he didn't want to get caught. <laughs> Let's tighten up your drag a little bit there. Yeah. Gonna ease us back right up there. Right, right there where you thought he'd be. Whoa! <laughs> he's trying to be, be like a flying fish, wasn't he? Yep. show the people how to clean the fish and get prepared for cooking and table fare. So I'll start right behind the gill plate. You see how I'm laying my knife there and underneath the, the belly fin and simply run your knife till you hit that, that backbone and turn your, your blade down so you can go straight down the backbone. Now you can see if you have well pretty easy to understand that if you had not have cleaned or uh, cold, frozen this fish, you'd have blood all the way up and down the backbone. But since the fish was really cold, it's caused that blood to go to their internal organs. Any, any type of animal that you clean, the more blood you get out of the system, the better it's gonna taste. Pretty simple, it's really simple. And then we're going to fillet. You see how much of the blood vessel I left there on the, on the skin? That's, that's all you want to have is that center line right there. That is a blood vessel, but it virtually has no blood left in it. So again, you remove that tainted flavor of blood from your fish fillet, and that in itself is going to make it taste a whole lot better. All right, we we filleted the, uh, the sides off of the backbone and uh, kept them in a nice fresh batch of water. We're simply going to take the rib cage off of it with a, a little carry knife and discard it. Make sure you put your fish back in that fresh running water. All you have to do now is simply bread it with uh, a good seasoning, put it in the grease, and have a great meal. Well, appreciate you guys being with me. Thanks for taking us out. You bet. I had a great time. Yeah, with you. I hope you have. I'm Michael Thompson. This has been my story. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah. I say I got the biggest one. Alright, hard to beat this.